as he comes to minister this morning. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Turn with me in your Bible to Revelation chapter 12. I have to say that after listening to uh, Pastor uh, Tory last night, uh, Pastor uh, Jimmy Rosario this morning, it's very, very comforting to me uh, to know that we have uh, men like those men that are there to catch the torch. And uh, I know there's many others in this room uh, that you have been diligent like those men. And I highly uh, encourage you uh, to, uh, to stir yourself, to be one of those men. And let's multiply this. Uh, the best times are yet to come. Uh, we ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, just uh, when uh, sin abounds, grace does much more abound. I believe that uh, God allowed things to um, go snap, crackle, and pop in the time of Mordecai. And uh, right at the very end, uh, old uh, Haman's harebrained scheme, he uh, hung himself. Amen. Because our God, uh, we have not seen all the aces that God holds up his sleeve. And so uh, be encouraged. I want to minister out of the book of Revelations. And I've um, given a lot of thought to uh, preaching the last slot of this, uh, this conference. It's a monumental uh, conference. And I want to send you home, unlike so many of the other sermons that have imparted things for you to take home, I want to send you home without something. I don't doubt that many of you came bearing what I'm about to minister on. Uh, you came bearing this into conference because the issue I'm going to address is far, far more uh, frequent than most realize. It is something that attaches itself to life's bummers and realities and particularly has insinuated itself on the back of COVID. I'm referring to the curse of condemnation. I can never forget uh, Pastor Mitchell's comment. And he said this uh, one time when I was a young disciple, I never forgot it. Anytime, Alston, someone gets sick, or gets the flu, that will always be accompanied by a spirit of condemnation. And if you think about it uh, with me this morning for a bit, we're talking about a very, very opportunistic spirit that none other than the devil himself takes a direct hand. Many things the devil does through his subordinates, but we are informed very clearly, very precisely that this is the devil's main line of attack. And I want to impress upon you uh, by way of a vivid illustration from uh, something that happened to my, my dog in the Philippines, Balboa. And uh, this is a dog that was a very, uh, you know, beloved dog, it was always a cheerful dog. It was half German Shepherd, half uh, Doberman Pinscher. And it was uh, full of life, full of vitality, always, always greeted me and uh, was uh, my good friend there in the Philippines, as well as being a very good uh, guard dog. But... Uh, there was, a, uh, there was a contest early on, and that contest was between the ticks uh, that were so prolific. And in the uh, tropical weather, uh, it seemed like the ticks, uh, you know, they, they, <laughs> they had super growth. They, 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 they multiplied uh, almost on a supernatural level. I, I did battle. I, I would pick them off. I would comb my dog with a steel comb. I had imported tick collars from the States, uh, but it was very, very apparent that I was losing the battle. 
These ticks, I'm, I'm not joking. They multiplied, and, uh, and uh, so, uh, so, you know, I uh, came home one day, and instead of the uh, Balboa bounding down the end of the driveway to meet me as was his usual uh, uh, experience, he was at the top of the driveway, and he was obviously in distress, and, and so he still had that heart to come to his master, but he could not get up. He was immobilized or paralyzed in his back legs and haunches, and so he literally was trying to pull himself by his front paws, and so I took him to the vet. The vet uh, quickly diagnosed him and immediately uh, said he has uh, he has tick paralysis. And so uh, I said, is there any hope? He said, oh yes, I've got something to fix it. And so there was some internal medicine that was administered. And within a day or two, all of these little insidious pests died and fell off his uh, coat. And, uh, and uh, uh, shortly he regained his life uh, the spring in his step, and I'm glad to report uh, that he went on to um, be a very good guard dog. What had happened, though, is that the ticks had multiplied to such a level that they literally drained the lifeblood out of him, and he became anemic, and it manifested in his back legs, and there was paralysis. I want to say that the same exact dynamics fall into place when condemnation begins to wrap its tentacles around us and puts its little pods on us and begins to suck the very life. But I also uh, have to report to you that the remedy for restoration is, is not only possible, but I'm, I have a word from God. God is going to set some people free. You're going to leave different than when you came in, in here this morning, this week. And so I want to read Revelations chapter 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives and unto the death. God, we have no confidence in our flesh, but all confidence through Jesus Christ we can do all things. I'm asking for some spiritual surgery. I'm asking you, God, to nuke every tick of condemnation, every foul lie from hell that the accuser has launched or planted. God exposed through the word of God this morning. God will know the truth. The truth shall make us free. Bruise the serpent's head and exalt Jesus Christ in this place. We're so thankful we ask in Jesus' name. God's people say, Amen. let's consider condemnation. And immediately I'll say it is a force that has to be reckoned with. I once was listening to an interview from a prison warden, and, and he was asked the question, uh, what is the worst sentence that can be imposed uh, upon a prisoner? And immediately he uh, replied back, a life sentence. When there's no prospect of any type of freedom ever being granted again, something begins to unravel within the human personality. Now there's nothing to strive for. Hope is literally drained away, and so literally nothing matters because the clank of the prison door and the snap of the lock, um, uh, it is permanent. Um, and it's these people that become, according to the experts, the most unruly. And so when you take hope away from people, something begins to self-destruct within. 
And so obviously we can apply this uh, to every Christian, every Christian who spiritually receives a life sentence um, or more exact, a testimony from the devil. And it removes this testimony that gets lodged in and somehow insinuates itself in and puts its tentacles in um, uh, that you begin to have a sense that um, you're not going to ever be used by God again or never to the same level that you could have. You are damaged goods, permanently so, and, uh, and you're never going to become what God originally intended for you to be. And in the worst case scenario, you can come to believe, uh, what's the use? It's over. I'm a reprobate. I've committed the unpardonable sin. The devil, you know, I would probably pose that question to every person here in this room, and very few of you could really tell me what's the unpardonable sin. You just know you've done it, that's all. What the heck? I'm going to wind up in hell anyway, so bag it. Scripturally, Proverbs 29, 18 captures the desolation of that. Where there is no vision, or we could put where there's no hope, where there's no prospect for a future, the people perish. Literally, they, you've heard no doubt, they cast off restraint. They run amok. They run wild, naked, as it were, very vulnerable in the streets. And, and simultaneously, there's a loss of dominion and discipline. I want to get a very precise definition from a number of the uh, experts. So Strong's tells us about the word condemnation. An adverse judgment or verdict fares a damnatory sentence. Vines has it, the sentence pronounced. So as we take those um, uh, different uh, definitions together, we're talking about a word, a spiritual fiery arrow that has been fired uh, into your spirit that proclaims guilty, guilty, unworthy, unclean, hopeless, uh, useless, um, and we could multiply other words uh, of, uh, of that, um, of that um, uh, gender. You see, this is something that, that all of us, to one degree, are familiar with um, uh, or another. It's a double whammy. It not only attacks our standing with God, but it also our service for God. And the main point is, uh, it is something that we can hear and feel that affects our walk. It, it does like what it did to my dog, um, uh, Balboa. It puts you off balance, off kilter, uh, and our confidence in the very things of God begin to waver. Uh, and you know what? James tells us that if you're in that wavering kind of a, of a state, um, you're not going to receive anything from God. And so the cycle becomes ever more, uh, ever more um, uh, detrimental. So it's more this morning. I want to enlarge a little bit. It's more than mere words. It's a spirit. Very, very personal wicked attack from our adversary um, that you clearly um, uh, perceive um, inside. This is a non-stop battering. The Bible has it night and day. And so we have the expression 24-7. Think about what the Bible is revealing to us about our adversary. Paul tells us we're not ignorant of his devices, of his stratagems that he would uh, employ. We, we must, must not be ignorant. And 24 7, um, this um, uh, fiend, uh, this evil uh, uh, adversary um, uh, is about this business, um, pointing out your faults, your weaknesses, stirring your memory. Um, 
causing you um, uh, to um, uh, examine your faults under a magnifying glass, times and places where we have failed uh, to measure up uh, both things that we have done that we shouldn't have done. Anybody here without sin? And things we were supposed to do, but we didn't. You know, the devil skillfully plays his deck of cards in this regard. And um, he mixes and matches uh, sins of commission. You know, a lot of issues about this are, fall under the category of sins of omission, where he's berating you until, like my dog Balboa, you become drained and worn out and, and possibly even paralyzed. You know, have we come to the conclusion yet that in the devil's view, we are never, ever going to be good enough? You could be the best. You could be. You could be, you know, you could be Jesus himself. <laughs> and he still is going to put his bony finger uh, to try to push buttons um, and to try to cast doubt and, uh, and, uh, and to supplant uh, and, uh, and not only uh, uh, pointing out things, uh, but also uh, he, you know, wants to call into question and challenge every motive. Do you know a master stroke, we have to give credit where it's due. A master stroke um, about the enemy um, is that he uses your own voice to condemn you. If I was to say, how many of you have ever heard the devil's voice? Well, if you're saved <laughs> and you've never heard the devil's voice, I wonder about your salvation. But uh, what voice did he use when he spoke to you? It's been pointed out he's, a, he's an excellent ventriloquist. He knows how to uh, hide behind your voice. He knows how to subtle. Remember, he is the most subtle of creatures. He knows how to worm his way in. And, uh, and uh, what's easy to miss is that when you're under this assault, how persistent he is to do this. And the Bible tells us it's 24-7. It's a constant barrage. And I, and, uh, and I want to uh, reinforce here uh, that we are told that hell's biggest gun is devoted. The scripture gives us four, not one. Not two, when the Bible wants to emphasize something in the mouth of two witnesses. But when some, you know, when God wanted to tell uh, Peter, he said, Simon, Simon. So we know, we understand that there's uh, an emphasis, you know, when there's a, an emphasizing in Scripture, there'll be some, somebody's name is repeated twice. But in this instance, um, four of the most notorious names, devil, Satan, dragon and serpent why is that and this is linked to his uh, uh, to his ministry if you will this uh, uh, his strategy if you will um, he is the accuser of the brethren night and day day and night in and out uh, non-stop uh, and uh, and uh, the bible would have us to understand this now i want to point out something that i've been uh, reflecting about and that is, um, the Bible tells us in Daniel, and kind of, you know, in conjunction with this spirit of condemnation, the Antichrist spirit, uh, he will seek to wear out the saints of the Most High. And, you know, one of the dangers right in that, con in, in that um, passage um, is that, uh, and he will seek to change times and seasons. Brother. You know what, um, and, and thinking about COVID, uh, thinking about uh, the spiritual dimension of COVID, um, you know, I got COVID. I'm not going to tell you where I got COVID. <laughs> Hello. 
I forgave my brother Richard, but anyway. Um, <laughs> I, anyway. You know, Richard Fontaine, who is that guy, you know? And, uh, and so, and, and so, but you know, I, I had a very, very, very mild experience and, and, and thank God for that. I, I do thank the Lord for that. But you know, I've, I've talked to many, many, many people that have had COVID and there is definitely a spiritual component. And what Pastor Mitchell said applied to the flu, all the more, buddy, applies to this weird, foul, spiritual, spiritually um, concocted and loosed. And, and I would say the physical is the lesser uh, danger. It's the lingering, the residual uh, weirdness. People's minds have been bent People's minds that were, you know, normally happy and, and, and you could even say, uh, you know, sound-minded individuals. Pastor, I was hallucinating. Pastor, I've never thought about suicide before, but you know what? Uh, I was isolated and this thought began, this attractive uh, allure of suicide. Dude, we're talking about some devils. Are you with me? And... To wear us out. And that's, you know, a dangerous time. I'm just throwing this in for free because I like you. <laughs> this is when things can be, you know, times and seasons can be changed when you're very much at the end of your uh, rope or you're all, uh, you know, you're all um, uh, tuckered out, so to speak. And so, and so uh, again, never lose sight. He is the accuser of the brethren. May God, please God, make this fresh in our minds. I know we've heard that expression, but it needs to hit us with the impact. And, and this is far more uh, common or far more uh, deadly than you may think. I preached a message along these lines uh, in, a, in a rally, and a brother came to me. He'd been a pastor for many years. In fact, um, uh, he had a very successful church. And after thanking me for the sermon, then he said, I, I just want to tell you something. You, you're right on about this. He said, uh, my previous experience, um, I, I had this uh, ministry for 14 years. And every time I went up the stairs to speak from the sacred desk, I heard a voice that said to me, you have nothing to say to these people. And that brother had uh, a, 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 an unfortunate experience, and, and he was not trying to justify, uh, you know, the mess up that he had in his life. Uh, but believe you me, behind the scene, one of the contributing factors uh, is this Chinese torture, drip, drip, drip drip uh, and men and women uh, that other you know otherwise are totally uh, uh, sound and good and 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 so, uh, my point is uh, is that you too can be vulnerable now let's look at what this produces in a person that's under this microscope or shall we say this lash the aim is obvious it's aimed at your will to collapse it by undermining every single Christian practice God has designed to help us to live for God. In other words, let's run through a few of these. Why bother praying if you feel like a worthless worm? You're lying to me if you tell me you've never prayed and been disconnected in your heart and saying, you know what, I don't even feel like, you know, I mean, you know, I, I like... I like some of these honest evangelists come up and they say, they say, you know what, God, are you like even into hearing me pray this? Have you ever had, had that kind of a thing? It's like, you know what, I, I, I know, you, you know, some of you have reached the rarefied atmosphere. You, you, you know, you and Jesus are so close. But you know what, um, if you get some smidgens of, uh, of these little things that are, that are working in your spirit, you know, you know and, and, and you can, you know, if you don't take the time to nail it, which is what we're going to do this morning. 
We're going to get some deliverance this morning. But if you don't nail it, if you don't call it out and judge it, so what can happen is subtly you can begin to disconnect or drift in your prayer life. But, you know, if you do feel condemned, uh, you're, not, you're not so apt to really want to run into the presence of Jesus. Uh, uh, it's extremely hard to draw near if you feel he's displeased with you. And again, it might not be something that you just put your finger on. It could just be a, a, a crappy feeling that you have. Uh, and so... Uh, People that are under this cloud, they don't read their Bible well. Instead of it being a source of inspiration, now it can turn into a club uh, to threaten them. There's a reason the Bible said, the letter kills. You know, the devil is the best legalistic theologian um, there is on the planet Earth. I'm always fascinated by this fact that Satan took Jesus to church and quoted him scripture. A lot of people say the devil who knows the Bible forwards and backwards and quotes it. Actually, the truth is he only quoted scripture one time. And it was when he took Jesus to church uh, and, uh, and quoted out of the Psalms uh, about uh, throw yourself down. But it's very interesting to me if, it, if in the context um, at the heart of that temptation, he, he took Jesus. He's very, we all know he's a religious spirit. Amen. Satan's a religious spirit. He wants to be God. And so he he has no problem uh, interfacing, moving in and out of religious services. And and so he takes, of all places, Jesus to church, uh, and he quotes him scripture. Um, But at the heart of that temptation that was real was a goad of condemnation. If you are really who you say you are, go ahead, go ahead, jump. If you really, really had faith in yourself uh, and the word of God, then you could do it. Uh, and uh, know this, the devil's well-versed in twisting the word of God uh, and to turn it into a bludgeon against us. Condemnation is nothing um, if it isn't legalism on steroids. <laughs> Outreach? Did you say Saturday outreach? Witnessing? Dude, if I have this voice inside my head that I'm trying to tell somebody about Jesus uh, and there's a broken record that says you hypocrite and uh, and this condemnation that's telling you you're a phony Oh, it's so amazing how many, how many born-again saints uh, uh, find so much more important things to do, like go to the, uh, to the um, uh, yard sale and see if you can't find a Mickey Mantle card. I just know God's going to lead me to find a rare card. And yeah, another week goes by where you don't, witness and another uh, opportunity where you don't stand up or step up to minister. Why? What's the, what's the real reason? Not, don't give me your baloney. What's the real reason that many are absent from the front lines? Uh, well, you, you always have something to do. No, there's a spirit of condemnation that needs to be uh, uh, confronted and disabled in your life. Because, you know, when you have a clear, free, clean conscience, uh, you love to tell people about Jesus. You know what will happen, too, is that uh, it is accompanied by isolation, which all the more intensifies. You don't feel like going to church you don't feel like fellowship. You know, some of these people, the moment that the bell is, uh, you know, the final bell rings at the end of service, <laughs> man, and they are out of the here. They are, they, are, they are so far down the road, man. And, and, and what is that? You know what? Uh, you know, when you get saved and your heart is right, uh, God puts a supernatural love into you and, uh, and, and people that, even people that used to bother you, man. Uh, you, like, you know, in other words, if you, don't, if you don't like fellowship, why do you even think you want to go to heaven? I know this isn't a, I know this isn't really, really taught in the Bible, but I like to think that this is what's going to happen. If you don't like somebody, 
in the church. Uh, I believe that God, you're saved by grace, I get it, but I just believe the poetic justice is God's going to make you share in an apartment with that person. Right, let's, let, let's, let's move on. Amen. And so, and so uh, but the, the deal of it is, is, is if, you, if you talk to people, you don't really belong here. You're, you're not like every else. You know, if people, and there's a lot of variations, if, if people really knew what I was going through, they wouldn't want me around here. And, uh, and so the broken record uh, keeps uh, spinning. And, and uh, when you're in that, um, in that fog, fog of war, you don't do Christianity well. Listen to this letter that was uh, uh, given to me in South Africa. Hi, my name is Kelly. For the past few months, I've been suffering from, un- this is a Christian girl. Uh, but I've been suffering from unclean and evil thoughts. I was tormented in mind. I read my Bible every day and I tried so hard to concentrate and to meditate on it, but I couldn't. I felt like I was being pressed down. I was in bondage because when I read the Bible, thoughts would come to my mind and I would have sleepless nights, headaches. I was stressed. I tried to pray, but I felt like I was just wasting my time. I will never be free or even a a change. And so I'm going to stop it right there because I'm going to come back to this. Uh, But that that gives you the flavor of what somebody under condemnation this was a sincere young lady, uh, someone going to church, someone trying uh, uh, to serve God to the best of her ability, uh, but there was some, uh, something at work in her life that unless this, was, um, uh, unless this was identified, unless this was dealt with and cast out, she was not going to be long for the church and staying on in the things of God. And I prophesy there's some people here this very day that unless you allow the Spirit of God to do some open heart surgery for you, you're not going to make it. You won't be here next year. I'm not trying to, you know, be, uh, you know, a drama and over-dramatize this, but I'm, I'm talking about something. Listen, listen, Satan, four names, day and night. Uh, this is what he's all about. And so again, we're not ignorant um, uh, of, um, of the enemy's devices. So let's review some targets as well. You know, anybody that wants to live morally clean, you're going to be challenged on that. Who do you think you are? You think you're better than everybody? You think you're holier uh, than, um, you know, uh, than the people around you? You are so full of pride and begin to rock you that way. I remember a young man came to me after service and he said, Pastor, I'm really bothered. Uh, He was a good looking young man. I'd say he was about 18 years. I said, what's wrong, bro? He said, you know what? Um, uh, You know, I've been making a stand. I've been, you know, witnessing. I've been reading my Bible and living for God. And so there's these chicks that have been hitting on me, and I've been, you know what, I've been the, the king of ice, and uh, as he should be, and so now they're starting to call me gay. So what, are you gay? And you could tell this was just vexing him. Do I give him any uh, excuse for what, no, but you know what, he caved on that. You know, you know, yeah, I know there were other things at work, but there's other things at work in your life too. <laughs> I'm just making a point. You're going to live clean, and the devil is never impressed with us living clean. Job chapter 1, verse 8, and the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job that there's none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that fears God and and eschews or hates evil? Then Satan, I can see the sneer, answered the Lord, doth Job fear God for not? Have you not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? You've blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in land. But you put forth your hand now and you touch all that he has and he'll curse you, God. He'll curse you to your face, God. I know it's in men. That's wickedness, isn't it? Job passes an excruciating... I mean excruciating test. His own wife. Curse him. Curse him. (laughs) 
Somebody says it was more of a trial to leave her than to take her away. <laughs> but point is, he passed every test that Satan, you know, provoking God. I don't, and by the way, I don't believe it's, you know, just, you know, immature little, you know, uh, you know, pushing each other in the, in, the, in, the, in the parking lot at the high school. I don't, I don't believe that, that, that the devil can goad God. I believe there's much larger issues at stake. But the point is we still get to see that perspective is that uh, it's not good enough for the devil. And so, you know what? If you ever think that you're going to uh, have the world's um, uh, appreciation uh, I've had people, you know what, I poured my heart out and said, you know what, and I've lived for Jesus and I've repented and I've gone straight and my morals, you know, is clean and, 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 and then, you know, foolish me. And then I would say, and, and what do you think about that? And they take an ice pick and hit me right in the forehead. I like the old Mark Olson better. <laughs> Another area as a target is ministry or leadership. You are definitely gonna draw the ire of hell. He's gonna put his bony fingers right in your uh, buttons as it were. We have the Old Testament picture, Zechariah, I'm not gonna take a lot of time, chapter three, verse one, and curtain goes open and he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him and the Lord said to Satan the Lord rebuke you O Satan even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem he rebuke you is this not a brand plucked out of the fire now let's get the picture of Joshua now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel so you know what, we could unpack a lot of stuff there, but you know what, we just hasten to say uh, and take note that Joshua, the high priest, uh, and yet in the reality of the spiritual realm, yes, he is uh, uh, contaminated because we are sinful men and, uh, and we live amongst a sinful world. And, and, uh, and so, you know what? If you're ever going to be a pastor, you're ever going to be a missionary, you need to uh, file it away and remember this. Have it on quick recall. Peter's warning uh, uh, that Jesus spoke, uh, he, he highlighted Peter, but it really was to everyone. Uh, he said, Satan, uh, Simon, Simon, that's Peter. Peter's old name, old nature, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. The devil wants to get his mitts on you. Uh, he does not believe that you're uh, sincere. He does not believe that you are noble. Uh, he believes that there's some price. Everybody has a price. Uh, he totally um, uh, operates that way. You know, when I first went to the Philippines, you may not understand this, but I'm just putting some reference markers on the road for people. I came under withering. This is 1986, and, and uh, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm in a pretty isolated uh, position out there in Davao City, 1986, and, and I can tell you I went under an assault that almost um, took me out. And, and that assault was, um, uh, is that uh, the devil used to say to me, Olson, you have no right to speak to these people. You've never experienced what they're going through. Don't give me your platitudes. Don't give me your nice uh, sounding theories about this and that. Uh, you don't know what it's like. Uh, and therefore, you, 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 you American fat cat, get out of here. <laughs> You say, ah, just dust it up. I'm going to tell you, go one-on-one -on -one with the devil. It's an interesting thing, man. And it's not, you know, I, I would just tell the devil this. You know, some of the, some of the time, I couldn't even, I couldn't even make heart, hide in their hair. Was, is that me? Is it, is it God? Is it the devil? And, and my mind was in such a fog sometimes. And, and sometimes, you know, the devil presents such tightly packed reasoning that you're, <laughs> you're agreeing. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I'm just telling you, Goliath spoke nonstop, day and night, day and night, 40 days, and he had the whole 
army of Israel paralyzed. Uh, not one arrow, not one sword was crossed. Um, he stole their faith simply by speaking words. I need to mention quickly a word to Christian parents. Every single parent of a prodigal. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but you know what? Um, you have no guarantee. I know the promise. Believe in the Lord. You and your house shall be saved. Uh, but you know what? There's some, uh, you know, there's some periods of time. And that doesn't mean that, that you have a lock for sure, that it's automatic, uh, that your kids come out of the womb like John the Baptist speaking in tongues. Uh, and uh, never did they look back. Never did they have a, a weak moment. Uh, they're just powerful men and powerful women for God. You know what? Uh, I want to tell you something. One, I want to rebuke you for something. You say, Pastor, I just don't understand. You know what? My kid is, uh, you know, acting so, uh, you know, like a devil. And, and, uh, and I just don't understand it. I say, I do. Go look in the mirror. <laughs> Where did they come from? Could you, like, have a break? Can you, can you, you know what? You, like, like Christian parents, like this, this, this bizarre theology comes on their minds. Uh, listen, they have a free will. And I thank God for that. Amen. They, <laughs> it's like some of you are like. Huh? I never thought of that. And you know what? Wonderful. God bless you. Praise God. They grow up. They don't miss a beat. I've had some kids that, you know, have gone that way. But you know what? Uh, I'm just telling you, you're not, you're not guaranteed uh, that they're going to live without any kind of wrinkles or bumps uh, along the way. And what I've observed um, is that mercilessly, um, when uh, a kid goes prodigal um, and uh, perhaps rejects your faith uh, or how they they were raised, they go off to the far land, the greener pastures someplace else, maybe they're going to play the game, religious, uh, you know, they're even worse, the religious prodigals are going to go to another church, not your church, dad, uh, and so things are embarrassing, uh, people are going to ask you at conference about them, uh, and uh, this, that, or the other, uh, and I want to tell you something, that the devil is going to exploit this, uh, and you need to remember that rebellion is is as a sin of witchcraft. And so if your kids are in rebellion, they are infected with a virus uh, that if you don't make clear cut judgments uh, about what they're doing, I'm not saying judge their soul. Uh, please uh, understand me, but I am saying to have the discernment, uh, you know what? He's not. She's not living for God. Don't be up you know, in la la land that they can do no wrong or, or that now you've become, a, uh, you've become a Baptist with eternal security covers a multitude of their, of their uh, rebellion and sin. No. No, no. We believe you can backslide. We believe every man, every woman has to make their own decision, uh, personal uh, decision uh, to follow Jesus Christ and put faith in Christ to save them. No coattails. Can you say amen? And I, you know what? I, I do get ticked uh, because uh, the biggest problems I've seen uh, in the church world uh, in the last uh, 10, 15 years uh, has been because here's parents that were tremendous soldiers. You paid prices. You took stands. You made stands with your parents. Uh, uh, you paid the price to be disciple. You paid the price uh, to uh, uh, take crummy jobs. Uh, you were there, rain or shine, and, and, and the things of ministry. You did anything and would go anywhere for God. And now all of a sudden, you've got a, we've got another generation of religious uh, uh, kids uh, uh, that are full of pride and full of, uh, uh, you know what, uh, 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 you know, proprietorship. They, they think they're owed this. They think that, uh, uh, that their God's gift uh, uh, to, to himself was them. I always say, you know, God got along in eternity fine without you, before you. He'll do okay if you make those stupid choices to, to commit spiritual suicide. But I'm telling you that, that, that don't, listen, I'm going to speak a word to you. Don't uh, lose your reward. You have come so far, and you're going to let them uh, shake your faith? Well, you know what? I don't know if, there's, if I can believe this anymore. Dude, you know what? You had a Jesus people wedding on Sunday. 
and proper uh, dress code. You know what? We had to stand back in your day. No dealing crack, baby. And now you're going you're gonna to hate the preacher? You're going to make me the bad guy or your pastor the bad guy? And now you're going to go squirrely on us? You've come so far, you're just about a half, half meter away from the finish line. Don't. You know what? You tell your kid, I love you. I ain't going to hell for you. And I also say, don't tell the final score in the middle innings. You know, last target to mention here is a, the cruel, broken record. If you personally have failed, you personally have sinned, you personally stepped in it. Exhibit A is Peter. He face planted horribly and of great interest, accompanying his um, colossal fall, is these miserable roosters. You filthy bird, <laughs> shut your mouth. Ain't happening. You know what? If you got raised in America, cornflakes, you know, the roosters only crows at 5.30 or 6 o'clock, the alarm clock in the morning, and that's your idea of a rooster's crowing is just to wake you up and be your friend. I'm going to tell you the reality. The harsh reality is roosters uh, in the Philippines, um, they didn't get that memo. They, 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 they roost, they crow at, at 2 in the afternoon, at 4 in the morning, at midnight. They crow any time they darn well please. So that means that, listen, that means that Peter's going to have to navigate. Uh, he's going to have to deal with the fact uh, that I've got a voice to remind me of my failure until Jesus takes me home or until the rapture. There's always going to be a voice to remind me of how I screwed up. It might be innocent. Oh, brother, I heard about you. And you know what? Would you like, let that stand to the blood? <laughs> oh, tell us again how you screwed. You know what? Uh, how, I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you how I... I used, to, I used to be a pretty good, you know. I'm just saying, let us close defeating condemnation. Revelation 12, verse 10. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation. Listen to this. Underline them, please. Salvation, strength, kingdom of our God, power of his Christ. Uh, the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Listen, nobody should sin, but if you do sin, God has made provision. If you confess your sin, if you say you have no sin, even as a Christian, you lie. Truth's not in you. Thank God, if you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Jesus. I have no time to tell you about the cities of refuge other than just a little. And the cities of refuge, strategically placed, commanded by God, if you screwed up, you made accidents, um, you had a place to flee, and instead of getting cut down by the avenger of blood, so it's a picture, you mess up, they're in hot pursuit. You are supposed to hot foot it. You're not supposed to lollygag. You are supposed to uh, make tracks. And in Israel, they put them strategically located. Uh, there were streets um, that were maintained, no doubt signage. Uh, these were accessible places. Why? Because God wanted to have places uh, of rescue and places where it didn't have to end. It didn't, does not have to end that way. And you know what? Uh, the high priest dies uh, and, the, and, the, and the person that was behind those walls got to go back out. He got free from the bondage, free from the thing. And, I, and you know what? Jesus, in the Old Testament, uh, uh, cities of refuge were a place. New Testament, they're a person. Jesus is our city of refuge. And of course, the blood. Old timers knew, Hebrews 9, 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Let me 
go back and uh, share with uh, Kelly. And so she says, I'm never going to be free. I don't even know. But since the first revival service, I felt like you were speaking directly about my life. And I felt like something was being lifted off my shoulders. And throughout the services, my life has never been the same. God has really moved in my life. I feel like a newborn person. Everything seems so new to me. My mind is free and my life is so joyous. Now I know and I believe that even though the ship may seem to sink, God will rescue me and put me on dry land. Thank you, Pastor Olson. Da, 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 words of encouragement. I believe God used you to speak into my life. I believe that as well. The blood of Jesus. The old timers knew it. Plead the blood. Bloodline. Put it under the blood. You know what? Judge it. And even the voice of condemnation. And so here's the end of this matter. Edith is a working mother. She has six children. She drives home and she parks in the uh, uh, carport. She goes in to the kitchen, and there in a circle in the living room, all of her six kids are in a huddle, and they're staring at something intently, so she knows something's wrong, so she creeps up up behind, she looks over the shoulder of one of her kids, uh, and to her horror, she sees uh, six baby skunks. She shrieks, children, run! Each one grabs a baby skunk. God, God says to you, children, run, leave the skunk. <laughs> Let's bow our heads. You know what? You're here today, and God love you. You've been tremendous, the Spirit of God. You know, we hear excellent preaching, and we're so thankful for Pastor Foley, Masterpiece, uh, Pastor Rosario, Masterpiece. We are treated, we are blessed in our fellowship with such um, wonderful uh, expositors of the Word of God. But you know what is so much more important is the presence of God. And Jesus comes by His Holy Spirit, and He deals with individuals. Thank God He knows you by name. He knows your address. He knows what your thoughts are. And David said, you know, Lord, search me. Search my heart. Know me. See if there's any wicked way. And you know what? God knows if you're battling today what I've talked about. And it may not be something at the, at the level of, 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 you know, that you're, that you're crippled or you're, you're paralyzed. But, you know, it can be like a parking brake. You don't feel, uh, you know what, complete or your confidence has been jammed with in this, this COVID thing, this spiritual dimension. It's this, this fog, this, this blanket of, of cold, yucky, you know, stuff. First things first, get your heart right. If you're not a Christian, if you've never been saved or you're backslid, come on. If you're a backslider, if you're a prodigal son, come on, man. You do have a destiny, but I got news for you. That destiny is never happening without you. And you need to come to the Lord now. You'd raise your hand. Hold it up. I'm not going to pull this out long, but I, I do want to give an invitation. I see your hand. Come on. Come on. There's others. You quickly. Quickly. That condemnation spirit's been exposed. Uh, I see that hand. I see that hand. Who else? Come on. Quick. Put your hand up. There's another hand. Other hands. I see those hands. Quick, quick, quick. Your back slid. All right, listen. You're going to have to work with me. Help me. You raise your hand. Get up right now. Come on while everybody's still sitting with their heads bowed. You raise your hand. Come on down to the altar. Quick. Make your way down. God has got a, a miracle with your name on it. All right. Thank God for what Pastor uh, Foley ministered. Think about it. God. And how he honors and how he, uh, you know, took the lowly shepherds and put such incredible dignity in. And, and we, we got that message, Pastor Foley. Thank God. And, and, and Pastor Rosario, you know what? I appreciate that message for, you know, the guys. You're, you're, you're in your 40s, 30s and 40s, maybe 20s, maybe teenage. But you know what? You're saying, hey. I am going to be a student. I'm going to know our history. 
I'm going to know why we do what we do. There's a reason, Pastor Mitchell used to always say, there's a reason why we praise God openly and speak in tongues. There's a reason why uh, we unabashedly preach on money and believe on tithing. There's a reason uh, we uh, contend for discipleship and, and we use the terms. We use the terms that the Bible uh, has, discipleship. We're not into trying to be flashy and cool. And then, you know what? And I preach what I preach on condemnation. God's going to smite it under, under your feet, the God of peace. Let's stand, altar space, come on. And let's, t- today, right now, some things are going to happen right now. You come, let's, let's make a, an altar call. This is God's um, uh, operating table. There's men, there's women. I'm not given any justification for any kind of willful sin or rebellion. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, giving you a theology to make that acceptable in any, in any wise. I am talking about the foul strategy of hell against every one of us. I've talked to Pastor Mitchell before where he had to battle condemnation. I've talked to other great men of God and it's been sometimes crippling, paralyzing. And thank God, thank God, we do not have to go out of this place the way we came in. We can be overcomers. The blood of the Lamb is efficacious. The blood of the Lamb is still full of potency and and power to set the captive free. You can be like that little girl that wrote the letter. The blood is a turning point for you. Purge your conscience from dead works, from condemnation. There is now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Father, sweep this place. God, sweep this place by the power of the Holy Ghost. Break the yoke of bondage. Burst the barriers. Uh, God, even in in, um, areas of sin that have been rooted. uh, uh, Lord, uh, areas uh, of of defeat and discouragement. God, I pray you overwhelm with faith. uh, Overwhelm, uh, God, with deliverance. Command deliverances for Jacob. Command respiration, God, for Jacob. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, folks, I know that you've been so uh, faithful and gracious this week. You've been very, very um, uh, faithful to uh, tune in and been wonderful to preach to. Let's chop some wood right now. Are you ready? Somebody help me. Can, Can we get an amen? Stand with me. We're going to chop some wood right now. A devil exposed is a devil defeated. Got news for you. New levels, new devils. New boundaries, new battles. Little, little pithy little sayings, but <laughs> you're going to fight these fights. And I don't have, I, I feel like I could give word of knowledge. There are some pastor's wives and hell, you know what? Hell has been just like got your mind, and the, and the picture I see is just this thing. It's like this this rope, or, or, or you know, it's just been twisted and twisted, and the and it's like palpable. It's tangible pain, the stress, the the pressure, and you know what? That's not your portion. Of course, we have issues. But the devil is an opportunistic spirit, and he, tries to, he, he, he likes to climb on, he likes to glom on and ex- exploit. So you might be having a trial in the church. Yep, we all have trials. Uh, you know what? No temptation taking you, but such is common to all of us. You know what? You're not the only person. You've gone through some COVID stuff, and Oh, man, if I was to even tell anybody what the things were going on in my mind. Wow. Yeah. So let's, let's get the spiritual vacuum cleaner because when the, the devil was cast down, heaven began to rejoice and said, Now is come salvation, strength, the kingdom of our God, the power of his Christ. All of those glorious benefits are ours when 
hell is cast down, when hell is cast down, put him under tonight, today. And I want to pray with you, and we're going to believe for results right now. I'm, I'm believing not for words to be said. I'm believing for a transaction, command deliverances. And, and I want you to uh, pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I heard the word of God preached in all of these sermons, and even this week. And God, I receive all that you have for me. The personal rhema. I need you to quicken my faith to receiving levels, to delivering levels. And I'm going to agree right now as the word of God has exposed the lies of hell, of that old dragon, that old serpent, the devil and Satan. And I judge you, your lies. Every spirit of condemnation is not of God. I do not receive it. I give it no place. I cast you out. Get behind me. The God of peace bruise you underneath my feet shortly, right now, in the name of Jesus. The blood has prevailed. I am an overcomer. In Jesus' name, let's praise and worship. You will loose your hold, you lying, foul devils, lying spirits. You loose your hold. I speak the peace of God. I speak deliverance. Command deliverance for Jacob. God, respiration, enlargement, God, breath. Oh, you will lose your hold and leave. Off of pastors, off of pastor's wife, off of PKs, MKs. Lose your hold in the name of Jesus. The blood hath prevailed. Not by might, not by power, by your spirit. Bruise the devil. Praise and glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah.
ready to be launched. Do not say to me, the nations are closed. I am the God who gives rivers in the desert. Do not say to me that the opportunities are small because I am going to speak a word and you will hear me and you will have more opportunity than you ever thought possible. If only you will cry out to me, I will answer, thus saith the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we praise and worship you. We thank you for your word, O oh Lord, that confirms God, the Spirit of God that helps us and raises us up, God. Lord, move, Father God, in our midst. Lord, help us.